Why hello, my name is Ebony and welcome to part 2 of the Film Spark special, The Story of Blair Witch. This is a 7 part special to break down and deep dive into the lore of the Blair Witch and the associated films. This is part 2 where I discuss the first major picture in the series, The Blair Witch Project, and the second piece of side media to the main franchise, Sticks and Stones, an exploration of the Blair Witch. So grab a snacky snack and get comfy as we dive down into part two of the Blair Witch Rabbit Hole. Warning, spoilers ahead. The Blair Witch is a 1999 American supernatural horror film. Written, directed, and edited by Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez. It is a fictional story of three student filmmakers, Heather Donahue, Michael Sue Williams, and Joshua Leonard, who hike into the Black Hills near Burkittsville, Maryland in 1994 to film a documentary about a local myth known as the Blair Witch. The three disappear, but their equipment and footage are discovered a year later. The purposefully found footage is the movie The Viewer Sees. Merrick and Sanchez conceived of a fictional legend of the Blair Witch in 93. They developed a 35-page screenplay with the dialogue to be improvised. A casting call advertisement in Backstage magazine was prepared by the directors. Donahue, Williams and Leonard were then cast. The film entered production in October 97 with the principal photography taking place in Maryland for eight days. About 20 hours of footage was shot, which was edited down to 82 minutes Shot on an original budget of thirty-five to sixty thousand dollars, the film had a final cost of two hundred thousand to seven hundred and fifty thousand after post-production edits. When the Blair Witch Project premiered at the Sundance Film Festival at midnight on January twenty-three, nineteen ninety-nine, its promotional marketing campaign listed the actors as either missing or deceased. Owing to its successful run at Sundance, Artisan Entertainment bought the film's distribution rights for $1.1 million. The film had a limited release on July 14 the same year, before expanding to a wider release starting on July 30. While critical reception was mostly positive, audience reception was split. The Blair Witch Project grossed nearly $250 million worldwide, making it one of the most successful independent films of all time as well as the 41st most profitable horror film while also being a sleeper hit. The film launched a media franchise which includes two sequels, Book of Shadows and Blair Witch, novels, comic books and video games. The film is credited with reviving the found footage technique which was later used by similarly successful horror films such as Paranormal Activity and Cloverfield. In October 1994, film students Heather, Mike and Josh set out to produce a documentary about the mythical Blair Witch. They travel to Burkittsfield, Maryland and interview residents about the myth. Locals tell them of Rustin Parr, a hermit who lived in the forest and abducted seven kids in the 1940s. He supposedly murdered them all in his basement, killing them in twos while having one stand in a corner. The students explore the forest in North Burkittsfield to research the myth. They meet two fishermen one of whom warns them that the forest is cursed. He tells them of a young child named Robin Weaver who went missing in 1888. When she returned three days later, she talked about an old woman whose feet never touched the ground. The students hiked to Coffin Rock, where five men were found ritualistically slaughtered in the 19th century. Their corpse later disappeared. They camped for the night and the next day find an old graveyard with seven small cans, one of which Josh accidentally knocks over. That night, they hear the sound of sticks snapping. The following day, they try to hike back to the car, but cannot find it before dark and make camp. They again hear sticks snapping. In the morning, they find that three cans have been built beside their tent. Heather learns her map is missing. Mike reveals he kicked the map into the creek out of frustration, which provokes a fight between the trio as they realise they are now lost. They decide to head south using Mike's compass and discover stick figures hanging from the trees. They again hear mysterious sounds that night, including children laughing. After an unknown force shakes the tent, they hide in the forest until dawn. Upon returning to their tent, they find that their possessions have been rifled through and Josh's equipment is covered with slime. 
They come across a river identical to one they crossed earlier and realise they have been walking in circles. Josh vanishes the next morning and Heather and Mike try in vain to find him. That night they hear Josh's agonised cries but are unable to find him. They theorise that his yells are a fabrication by the Blair Witch to draw them out of the camp. The next day, Heather discovers a bundle of twigs tied with fabric from Josh's shirt. Upon opening the bundle, they also find a blood-soaked scrap of his shirt containing teeth and hair. Although distraught, she does not tell Mike that night she records herself apologising to her, Mike's and Josh's families, taking responsibility for their predicament. They again hear Josh's agonised screams and follow them to the abandoned ruins of the house of Ruston Parr, containing demonic symbols and children's bloody handprints on the wall. Trying to locate Josh, they go to the basement, where an unseen force assaults Mike, causing him to drop his camera. Heather enters the basement yelling, and her camera captures Mike standing in a corner, facing the wall. Heather calls out to him, but he doesn't react. The unseen force assaults Heather, causing her to drop her camera. And the film ends. Pre-production began on October 5th, 1997, and Michael Manello became a co-producer. In developing the mythology behind the film, the creators used many inspirations. For instance, several characters named Anya Anagrams. Ellie Kedwood, the Blair Witch, is Edward Kelly a 16th century mystic, and Rustin Parr, the fictional 1940s child murderer, began as an anagram for Rasputin. The Blair Witch is said to be, according to legend, the ghost of Ellie Kedwood, a woman banished from the Blair Township, later day Burkittsville, for witchcraft in 1785. The directors also cited influences such as the television series In Search Of and horror documentary films Chariots of the Gods and Legend of Boggett Creek. The directors incorporated that part of the legend along with allusions to the Salem witch trials and Arthur Miller's 1953 play The Crucible to play on the themes of injustice done to those who were classified as witches. Other influences included commercially successful horror films such as The Shining, Alien, The Omen and Jaws, the latter film being their major influence as the film hides the witch from the viewer for its entirety, increasing the suspense of the unknown. In talks with investors, the directors presented an eight-minute documentary along with newspapers and news footage. The documentary was aired on the television series Split Screen, hosted by John Pearson on August 6, 1998. Principal photography began on October 23, 1997 in Maryland and lasted eight days. Overseen by cinematographer Neil Fredericks, who provided a CP-16 film camera. The found footage was shot with a Hi-8 camcorder. Most of the film was shot in Seneca Creek State Park in Montgomery County, Maryland. A few scenes were filmed in the historic town of Burkittsville. Some of the townspeople interviewed in the film were not actors, and some were planted actors unknown to the main cast. Donahue had never operated a camera before and spent two days in a crash course. Donahue said she modelled her character after a director she had once worked with, noting her character's self-assuredness when everything went as planned and confusion during crisis. The actors were given clues as to their next location through messages hidden inside 35mm film cans left in milk crates they found with global positioning satellite systems. They were given individual instructions to help improvise the action of the day. Teeth were obtained from a Maryland dentist for use as human remains in the film, influenced by producer Greg Hale's memories of his military training, in which enemy soldiers would hunt a trainee through wild terrain for three days. The directors moved the characters a long way during the day, harassing them by night and depriving them of food. Instead of using fictional names, all three actors used their real names in the film, something Donahue has regretted doing. She revealed in 2014 that she had trouble finding new roles because of it. According to the filmmaker's commentary, the unseen figure that Donahue is shouting about as she is running away from the tent in the film's art director, Ricardo Moreno, who was wearing white long johns, white stockings and white pantyhose pulled over his head. The final scenes were filmed at the historic Griggs House, a 200-year-old building located in the Patapsco Valley State Park near Granite, Maryland. 
Filming concluded on October 31st, Halloween. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Sanchez revealed that the principal photography first wrapped approximately 20 to 25,000 had been spent. Richard Corliss of Time Magazine reported a $35,000 estimated budget. By September 2016, the Blair Witch Project has officially budgeted at 60 grand. The Blair Witch Project is thought to be the first widely released film marketed primarily by the internet. Kevin Fox became executive producer in May 1998 and brought in Klein and Walker, a public relations firm. The film's official website launched in June, featuring faux police reports as well as newsreel-style interviews and fielding questions about the missing students. These augmented the film's found footage device to spark debates across the internet over whether the film was a real-life documentary or a work of fiction. Some of the footage was screened during the Florida Film Festival in June. During screenings, the filmmakers made advertising efforts to promulgate the events in the film as factual including the distribution of flyers at festivals such as Sundance, asking viewers to come forward with any information about the missing students. The campaign tactic was that viewers were being told through missing persons posters that the characters were missing while researching in the woods for the mythical Blair Witch. The IMDB page also listed the actors as missing, presumed dead, in the first year of the film's availability. The film's website contains material of actors posing as police and investigators, giving testimony about their casework and shared childhood photos of the actors to add a sense of realism. By August 99, the website had received 160 million hits. After the Sundance screening, Artisan acquired the film and a distribution strategy was created and implemented by Steven Rothenberg. The film's trailer was leaked on the website Ain't It Cool News on April 2nd, 99, and the film was screened at 40 colleges in the United States to build word of mouth. A third, 40-second trailer was shown before Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace on June 8th. USA Today reported that The Blair Witch Project was the first film to go viral despite having been produced before many of the technologies that facilitate such phenomena existed. The film earned $1.5 million for 27 theatres in its opening weekend, with a per-screen average of 56000 The film expanded nationwide in its third weekend and grossed $29.2 million from 1,101 locations, placing at number two in the United States box office, surpassing the science fiction horror film Deep Blue Sea, but behind Runaway Bride. The film expanded further to 2,142 theatres and again finished in second place with a gross of 24.3 million in its fourth weekend, behind another horror film, The Sixth Sense. The film dropped out of the top 10 list in its 10th weekend and by the end of its theatrical run, the film grossed 140.5 million in the US and Canada and grossed 108.1 million in other territories. For a worldwide gross of 248.6 million, over 4,000 times its original budget. The Blair Witch Project was the 10th highest grossing film in the US in 99 and has earned the reputation of becoming a sleeper hit. In Italy, it set an opening record for a US film. Because the filming was done by the actors using handheld cameras, much of the footage is shaky, especially the final sequence in which a character is running down a set of stairs with the camera. Some audience members experienced motion sickness and even vomited as a result. Some critics have also noted that the film's basic plot premise and narrative style are strikingly similar to Cannibal Holocaust from 1980 and the last broadcast in 1998. Although Cannibal Holocaust director Ruggiero Diodato has acknowledged the similarities of the Blair Witch Project to his film, he criticised the publicity that it received for being an original production. Advertisements for the Blair Witch Project also promoted the idea that the footage is genuine. Despite initial reports that the last broadcast creators, Stefan Avalos and Lance Wheeler, had alleged that the Blair Witch Project was a complete rip-off of their own work and would sue hacks in films for copyright infringement, they rejected these allegations. One of the creators told IndieWire in 99, if somebody enjoys the Blair Witch Project, there is a chance they will enjoy our film and we hope they will check it out. Film critic Michael Dodd has argued that the film is an embodiment of horror, modernising its ability to be all-encompassing in expressing the fears of American society. 
He noted that in age where anyone can film whatever they like, horror needn't be a cinematic expression of what terrifies the cinema goer. It can simply be the medium through which terrors captured by the average American can be showcased. In 2008, The Blair Witch Project was ranked by Entertainment Weekly as number 99 on the list of 100 best films from 83 to 2008. In 2006, the Chicago Film Critics Association ranked it as a number 12 on their list of top 100 scariest movies. It was ranked number 50 on filmcritic.com's list of 50 best movie endings of all time. In 2016, it was ranked by IGN as number 21 on their list of top 25 horror movies of all time, number 16 on Cosmopolitan's 25 scariest movies of all time, and number 3 on The Hollywood Reporter's 10 scariest movies of all time. In 2013, the film also made the top 10 list of The Hollywood Reporter's highest grossing independent films of all time, ranking number 6. Director Eli Roth has cited the film as a marketing influence to promote his 2002 horror film, Cabin Fever, with the internet. The Blair Witch Project was included in the book 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die. After the film was released in late November 99, the historic house where it was filmed was reportedly being overwhelmed by film fans who broke off chunks as souvenirs. The township ordered the house demolished the next month. Directed by Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez, considered for inclusion in the theatrical release of The Blair Witch Project and released to VHS as part of a special promotion that ran when The Blair Witch Project was released on home video, Sticks and Stones runs 30 minutes and overlaps with the mockumentary Curse of the Blair Witch. For more information on the Curse of the Blair Witch, go back to part one of this series. The mockumentary primarily consists of alternate cuts of many of the previous film's interviews, and there is some new material to be found, including a brief 1995 conversation with Joshua Leonard's father about his son's disappearance. Sticks and Stones also includes an extended conversation between Heather Donahue and Michael Williams from a deleted scene that was cut from the theatrical release of The Blair Witch Project. Sticks and Stones are separated into segments. A lot of the start of the mockumentary is footage we've already seen and some extra info on what happened to the teens. However, it's the additional information after that that adds more layers to the lore of the Blair Witch. The stories of Eileen Treacle and Robin Weaver provide an additional layer to the story of the Blair Witch and helps try to solidify the now already established folktale. The story of Robin Weaver is one that's said within the main film of the Blair Witch, however I feel is skimmed over a lot by viewers. The legend goes as a young girl Robin disappears within the woods, when a search party is assembled to find her, they too go missing. A second search party is assembled to find the first only for the second search party to come to a well-known location known as Coffin Rock, and finds the original search party laid across the rock. However, the second search party is laid across the rock tied together like a raft and disemboweled. Cra carved onto the faces, feet and hands were a pagan symbol. The search party goes back to town to help, only upon their return the bodies have vanished. The story of Eileen Treacle is one of a young girl who was wandering the woods when on a picnic with friends. When wandering near a shallow river, a white hand came from the river and pulled her under, only to never be seen again. There's two more segments, the final being a discussion on the Blair Witch Project film with some additional footage cut from the theatrical release and one segment based off the myth of Rust and Parr. The story of Rust and Parr is another brought up within the film and honestly the most important if you want to understand the ending of the film. The story goes, Rust and Parr was a man in the 1940s who abducted seven children from the town. He lured them to his basement and would kill them in pairs, ensuring one of the two would then be standing face away in a corner. Now I've seen The Blair Witch Project more times than I can count, so I was always very aware that it was all a mockumentary. And even so, I got sucked in watching this segment of Sticks and Stones. If you zone out and forget what you're watching, the production, the clips, the photos and even the interviews and trial footage really gets under your skin and you truly believe you're watching an episode of a true crime show or something similar. I feel Sticks and Stones would have been better received and gained more if it had been part of the Curse of the Blair Witch mockumentary. Take the segments from Eileen Treacle, Robin Weaver and Rustin Parr, incorporate them within the Curse of the Blair Witch 
and keep the rest as bonus material for the DVD. That would have been more effective as a whole. With that being said, this concludes episode 2 of the story of the Blair Witch. Ratings and full reviews of each piece of media viewed within the series will be provided in the conclusion episode at the end. I hope you've gained this second episode, or rather enjoyed the second episode, and continue to listen along the way for the full seven-part series. Again, my name is Ebony, I am the host of the FilmSpark podcast, and thank you for listening.